years, had a stroke and died. Western analysts looked for the emergence of a clear successor. They found it in the secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party, Nikita Khrushchev. We will return in a moment to Weekday Wing Surrey Channel. The prototype of the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress flew for the first time in April 1952 and immediately transformed the balance of air power between the Soviet Union and the United States. Even though it would not enter service for some years, it was a vast technological leap beyond the B-29 and the B-36. It could fly halfway around the world without refueling and reach speeds close to the speed of sound. It was an impressive aircraft and would remain the symbol of American intercontinental air power for 30 years. But while America led the intercontinental strategic bomber race in 1952, it was not by as much as Westerners may have imagined. This is the Tupolev Tu-16, codenamed the Badger by NATO. It made its first flight at about the same time as the B-52, and while it did not match the B-52's range or speed, it was still a major achievement for Soviet aviation. The Tu-16 could fly at more than 600 miles an hour, and its range of 3,000 miles could be extended by aerial refueling from the wingtip of a tanker version of the same aircraft. The Tu-16 was not intended to compete directly with the B-52. It was designed as a medium-range bomber and closely matched the performance of the American medium jet bomber of the time, the Boeing B-47. Almost 2,000 Tu-16s were produced for the long-range air force and the naval air forces between 1952 and 1958. The Tu-16 originated from a Red Air Force request for a replacement for the Tu-4. The two main design bureaus in the competition were Tupolev and Ilyushin. Ilyushin already had a successful jet bomber, the IL-28, in service. They chose simply to scale it up to a larger version. But Tupolev was developing a completely new design. And when the Ilyushin and Tupolev prototypes flew off against each other, the Tupolev aircraft was superior. It went into production as the Tu-16. The Ilyushin competitor, the IL-42, was an old-fashioned straight-winged aircraft with its jet engines in large wing pods, but the Tu-16 was a thoroughly modern design. Its advanced aerodynamic features placed it on a par with any comparable Western aircraft. It had swept wings with a span of 108 feet. Its two engines were recessed smoothly into the sides of the fuselage at the wing roots. The engine nacelles themselves were more slender in the middle than at the front or back, giving a wasted effect that was intended to reduce drag. The Tu-16 carried a crew of six. Two were gunners. The forward dorsal gunner operated from a bubble on top of the fuselage. There were two pilots in the main cockpit, and the navigator was housed in the glazed nose section. This is the bomb site. But not all Badgers were bombers. During its long service life, NATO identified at least 11 different variations. Some were naval anti-shipping versions, and others were used for electronic surveillance. The Tu-16 could carry up to 8,000 pounds of bombs in its internal bomb bay. Now, it could also carry missiles under the wings or a standoff bomb under the fuselage.
The rear gunner was housed in a turret right in the tail of the aircraft. The fin and rudder were mounted high on top of the fuselage to keep them well above the level of the wings and engines. The Tu-16 was an extremely successful aircraft with a very long service life. It was still being produced in China in the 1980s, and some Tu-16s are still operational in Russia. The civilian derivative, the Tu-104, was one of the first jet airliners to go into service anywhere in the world. This is the Miasischiff Atlant. It's the civilian version of the Miasischiff M4, known to NATO as the Bison, the Soviet Union's first attempt at a genuine intercontinental jet bomber. The Atlant was developed in the mid-80s to transport the Soviet space shuttle, the Buran, on its back. The large tank this one is carrying is used for liquid hydrogen, also for the shuttle program. Apart from its large twin vertical tails and the carrying attachment on the fuselage, the Atlant is basically the same as its ancestor, which was first seen in public at the Soviet Aviation Day fly-past in 1954. The Bison was the Soviet Union's first serious attempt to match the B-52 and build a heavy jet bomber with intercontinental range. It was a response to Joseph Stalin's 1949 order for work to begin on a jet bomber capable of flying to the USA and back. When the prototype of the Messischief M4 was finished, it was called the Molot, the Hammer. Andrei Tupolev, knowing that Soviet jet engines were not sufficiently developed to satisfy Stalin's demand, chose not to compete with Myasishchev and instead concentrated on the development of a turboprop engine capable of powering a large aircraft. Stalin's requirement was that the intercontinental bomber be capable of flying 10,000 miles. Mersischev used four of the same jet engines that powered Tupolev Tu-16, but they were not capable of delivering Stalin's range. Mersischev had been given special resources to build this mammoth aircraft. A new factory was built, and he was given a free hand to recruit 1,500 designers and technicians from other design bureaus. The Bison was not as big as its American opponent, the B-52. Its wingspan was 20 feet less. Its maximum takeoff weight of 350,000 pounds compared with the B-52's half a million. At the Geneva summit in July 1955, the reunification of Germany, European security, and disarmament were on the agenda for discussion by leaders of Britain, France, the United States and the Soviet Union. US President Eisenhower made his Open Skies proposal, suggesting that America and the Soviet Union exchange defense blueprints and allow mutual aerial surveillance in the interests of slowing down the arms race. Nikita Khrushchev did not accept. In the 1955 Moscow Aviation Day air show, Western observers watched a huge swept-wing bomber fly past, powered not by jets, but by turbo-driven propellers. The observers thought it could be little more than a curiosity, and no match for the Mersischiff bison they had seen the year before, but they were in for a shock. Among an impressive array of Soviet Air Force equipment, they had just glimpsed what would prove to be the world's fastest propeller-driven aircraft, a bomber with